Duna is the second most popular destination in the Kerbal system, right after the Mun. However, our beloved Orange Ball presents some unique challenges for SSTOs. You see guys, there are two main ways of landing a space plane. If the body you're landing on doesn't have an atmosphere, you simply land like a rocket, with engine power. And if it does have an atmosphere, like Labor Carbon for example, you can simply land like a normal plane. However, neither of these methods really work on Duna. Its atmosphere is too thick for a space plane to land, using the typical engine deceleration approach. But at the same time, the atmosphere is also too thin to provide adequate lift for a plane like landing. Now, we can somewhat get around the issue by increasing our wing size drastically, this increases our lift, reducing our stall speed, and allows us to comfortably land on the surface, but this also increases our drag considerably. And even though drag is not a problem on Duna, ascending out of carbon with a wing this massive would be a real challenge. However, there is a third way of landing, VTOL. Now, if this was KSP-1, I'd simply put my main engines on a swivel and have them rotate down whenever I want to go into VTOL mode. But sadly, KSP-2 lacks any robotics of any kind, which means that I will need to have a dedicated VTOL engine. However, as you guys can imagine, having an engine stuck on the underside of the aircraft perpendicular to the airstream is suboptimal for its aerodynamics. But there is still a way of making this work. Shuttles. A shuttle basically functions like a rocket. This means that it spends very little time in Kerbin's atmosphere, and unlike an SSTO, it doesn't really care that much about drag. And so, with our design goals clearly set out, I got to work. Now, this build was effectively split into three different parts. Firstly, I had to design the shuttle itself. Thanks to the fact that this was a shuttle, and we didn't really care about drag, I could get pretty wild with my designs, so I decided to prioritize looks and worry about performance later. The approach I took was building the entire frame out of wing pieces in order to get a smooth and aerodynamic looking design. I wanted the shuttle to look futuristic, as it was sculpted out of a single piece of material, maybe even something you'd see in the Avatar movie. The entire build took me about 8 hours, so there was no real way I could fit everything into a time lapse. Unfortunately, there is only so much I can speed the footage up before it turns into an indiscernible mess of camera wiggling. Anyway, uh, once I got the looks where I wanted them, it was time to make this brick actually fly. This took a bit of trial and error, a lot of test flights followed by minor design changes. In addition, it was important that we had a lot of elevator authority, since we'd need it for the Duna Vito landing. After designing and verifying that our shuttle can fly properly in plane mode, it was time to tackle the second stage of our list, VTOL. When designing a VTOL craft, the main thing you need to consider is the balance between center of mass and center of thrust from the VTOL engine. Ideally, you want your center of thrust to be right over top of your center of mass for maximum stability. Thankfully, my center of mass was exactly where I expected it to be, so it didn't take that much fine tuning to get our balance just right. But of course, KSP2 wasn't gonna make this that easy. For some reason, my VTOL vector would start to randomly spaz out mid-flight. After a lot of trial and error, I figured out that adding a probe core for the VTOL mode would fix the issue, however, it would only work in a very specific orientation. This meant that my roll axis was now inverted whenever I'd go into VTOL mode. But KSV2 truly works in mysterious ways, and the vector bug that I spent hours diagnosing back on the Kerbin randomly fixed itself midway through the flight. Which left us with the final stage of our build, the orbital insertion stage. Since NASA style shuttles are naturally unbalanced in terms of their thrust and weight distribution, you will need to make sure that your combined center of thrust is as close to the center of mass as possible. In addition, once the shuttle jettisons its first stage boosters, its center of thrust swings wildly from one side of the craft to the other, so you will need to make sure that your shuttle engines are able to compensate. Now, I really wanted to use SRBs for the first stage of our shuttle, 
but sadly there was just no way I could get the Delta View required for a mission, so I had a choice. Either rework the build and risk making it look worse, or replace the SRBs with liquid fuel boosters. And I chose the latter. After a bit more fine tuning, I felt confident that the build could achieve the goals that I set out for it, and so it was finally time to launch. Now, even though I did manage to get the shuttle to function decently well, it still was a handful to fly. Sassing KSP2 doesn't work very well with more complex builds, which meant that I had to constantly keep correcting my trajectory manually. In addition to that, due to the increased mass of the liquid fuel boosters, I had to gradually reduce their thrust manually throughout the flight. After the first stage separation, it was time to perform our very lengthy orbital insertion burn. Even though we had two vectors for this specific stage, our thrust to weight was still extremely low, so the burn took a couple of minutes. As always, I will have the craft palace in the description if you guys want to fly it yourself. But thanks to KSP2's abysmal sass, the craft is pretty difficult to fly, so I'd only really recommend it to experienced pilots. After we achieved an orbit, it was time to plot our Duna intercept and initiate the burn. Thankfully, SAS was actually keeping our ship on course by itself this time, which was good because I needed to keep an eye out on our orange tank's fuel levels. Midway through the burn, we will need to shut down our main vectors, jettison the orange fuel tank and switch to our single poodle engine. Sadly, we won't be able to use our vectors anymore as they're simply too angled and would make our shuttle spin out of control if they were fired back up. Once we were on an escape trajectory, we performed a small mid-course correction burn to give ourselves a nice and close Duna encounter. And after arriving at Duna, we decelerated with the help of several aero brakes. Now, since re-entry heating is disabled in KSP2, I could have went for a single, much more aggressive aero brake maneuver and landed on the surface right away. But I wanted to make sure that we would land on the light side of the planet for both yours and my own sake. Once we scrubbed off enough speed, it was time to make our final descent onto the planet's surface and pick a suitable landing location. The idea behind the landing itself is, once we're close enough to the surface, we pull a cobra maneuver to slow ourselves down and position ourselves in the correct orientation for our VTOL engine. Then we ignite the downward firing vector and guide ourselves to a smooth landing. Originally, I wanted to get a perfect veto landing for you guys to enjoy, but whenever I'd reload a save near the surface of Duna, my FPS would drop from 35 to about 3 for the next couple of minutes, so each attempt took substantially longer than it should have. And now, with the landing out of the way, our Kerbal can get out and stretch his legs for about one and a half years while we wait for our carbon transfer window. And once it was time to take off, we could once again fire up the VTOL engine and start our Duna Ascent. Thankfully taking off was a lot easier than landing. The ascent itself was fairly straightforward, however it did take us forever to leave Duna's surface. As you guys can recall, we can't reignite our main vectors since the craft would instantly spin out due to the offset thrust. If this was a rocket, I doubt we could have left Duna's surface. However, since we were in a shuttle, we could simply ascend at a shallower angle with the help of our wings. Once we achieved a stable orbit around Duna, we wasted no time and performed another burn to get ourselves on an escape trajectory. Once we left Duna's sphere of influence, we plotted our carbon intercept and executed another pretty lengthy burn. Since our trajectory was on a slight incline to Carbon's orbit, we needed to do one last mid-course correction burn to fine-tune our Carbon intercept. After reaching Carbon, we performed a couple of aerobrake maneuvers to slow ourselves down. Once again, we could have went for a single, more aggressive aerobrake, but since we wanted to land at a specific point on the planet, doing several smaller aerobrakes was preferable. Once we had our encounter plotted, it was just a matter of landing which proved to be pretty difficult. I'ma be honest guys, this thing is not fun on re-entry. 
Since this thing is basically covered in the wing pieces, pointing every which way imaginable, it's not that stable at high speeds. We also needed a very high control authority to perform the Cobra maneuver on Duna for the VTOL landing. That normally wouldn't be an issue, but KSP-2 SAS tends to overcorrect a lot, which ended up spinning our shuttle out of control numerous times. The only saving grace of this thing is its absolutely absurd 20 meter a second stall speed. But yeah guys, this is the story of how I got a VTOL shuttle to Duna and back. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. Do let me know what you thought about it in the comments. Your feedback is always welcome, as I want to make the best videos possible for you guys to enjoy. As always, I'm Kerman Von Brown, and I'll see you in the next one.